Debbie Downey. Uh, Mr. Spring, Mr. Summers, thank you for accepting the invitation of the committee. Um, in the interest of time, I'll skip straight to the core I wanted to talk about, which is the uh, pension top-up of 1.1 billion euros. Um, can you tell me your role in that decision happening, please? Well, this arose out of the need to reduce substantially the number of staff in the bank and to provide both for early retirement provisions and for um, redundancy or whatever way you want to put it. And um, the pension fund, the, the trustees of the pension fund required that additional funds be put into the, the, the pension fund by the bank. Uh, in order to meet the additional pension liability that it was going to have to suffer as a result of the early retirement arrangements. And the figure was put at this 1.1 billion. The Department of Finance uh, did not want any, the bank to put any cash into the fund, so they, they put in instead these loans which hopefully will generate funds over time. Uh, the proposal came to the board in, in the context of the, the restructuring of the bank, the, the downsizing of it, uh, and the board approved the, the arrangement. By the way, with, with, with no option but to approve it, if we want to go ahead with, with <coughs> that. Uh, just as Dr. Summers said, in terms of reducing the cost in the bank, we took on the early retirement uh, servants scheme to take out uh, two and a half thousand people who would be leaving the bank between now and 2014. And uh, the pension trustees pointed out to the bank that uh, the pension fund would not be adequately funded. Uh, if we did that to pay existing pensions and that was the option, the only option effectively uh, that the board of the bank had. And our, our main, you know, obviously all pensioners benefit, uh, but our main focus in the actions that we took was to make sure that the pension fund for the many thousands of pensioners of the AIB would be adequately funded. So in essence, my understanding of what you're saying is the 1.1 billion euros was necessary in order to facilitate the voluntary redundancy of the staff, approximately 2,500 staff. Is it the case that had the state not rescued the bank that these people would not have received voluntary redundancy packages? Well, I think if the state hadn't rescued the bank, we would have been in a disaster scenario. I mean, the, I think the state was left with no option. I mean, I was, I was also a fan. Specifically, though, Dr. Summers, to the, yeah. to the redundancy, is it reasonable to assume that had the state not intervened, all of the people in the banks would have lost their jobs and would have done so without very generous voluntary retirement packages? I think not only would, would all the staff in the bank have lost their jobs, we would have been faced with an absolute disaster. Is it not reasonable, then, to say that the state, the people of Ireland, should not have paid 1.1 billion euros to facilitate voluntary banking redundancies when had the state not stepped in, those people would not have received those packages. Well, <coughs> just to respond to that at a few different levels, as I say, if the state had not bailed out AIB, we would have been in disaster scene. <coughs> in terms of the, the cost of these redundancies, I understand the payback period was something over a year is my, my recollection. You know, the, and it was part of a name to try and reduce the overall cost of running the bank. And it, it contributes towards, I think it's 400 million per year, the, all the, the attempts that we made to shrink the size of the bank, reduce staff numbers, etc., will, will provide, you know, per annum once we get this thing through. So, I mean, you're, you're, we're caught between a rock and a hard place in these things. I would, I, obviously, we've only got seconds left. I, I would put it to you in this case, and I have great respect for your presence here today and for both of your careers in public service. I would put it to you that in this case, you oversaw and allowed to happen a 1.1 billion euro payment to facilitate voluntary redundancies for staff who, had the state not intervened, would not have been afforded voluntary redundancy, and that it was a, it was a a bad call and a bad use of public money in this case. I think it would have been fine to say to those staff, you know what, you got to go, and you're not getting voluntary redundancy from the people of Ireland, because had they not stepped in, you wouldn't be getting it anyway. I say that with great respect for both of your careers. In this case, I think it was a very bad call.